Welcome to this short lecture on sea level change. Uh, so I'm John van Dean, I'm a lecturer in physical geography and also the director of admissions for geography, geology and environment at the University of Hull. So yeah, we're just going to talk about sea level change today and I'm going to give you some resources that you can use as well and go play around with and learn more about sea level change. So this is a shortened version of a lecture that I would give to second years. Okay, so sea levels have changed in the past. They've changed naturally in the past. So as, as climate changes, and in the past climate changed naturally, um, that meant that ice sheets melted or ice sheets grew. And when you have ice sheets growing, so big masses of ice over Antarctica and Greenland, um, and then sometimes over North America and Siberia and Britain and Scandinavia, when you build up these big ice sheets, that's water that was in the oceans that is now locked away on the land in these big ice sheets, these big glaciers. Uh, so that means when, when you have, when you're in the middle of a glacial period, a time when we have these big ice sheets over Britain and Scandinavia and North America, as well as over Greenland and Antarctica like we have now, that means there's loads of water that was in the oceans that's now locked up on the land as ice. So there's less water in the ocean, so the ocean, the sea levels are a lot lower. So the last glacial maximum, so about 22,000 years ago or so, um, when we had these big ice sheets over North America and Europe um, and bigger ice sheets over Greenland and Antarctica than we do now, um, that meant that sea levels were about 120 metres lower 22,000 years ago than they are now. Okay, so you can, all those red areas are the areas which are now below sea level, but at this time would have been above sea level. So you can see you could have, Britain wasn't an island at that time. You could have walked from Britain to Europe over what is now the North Sea, because sea levels were so much lower. And also, if you look at the land, uh, look at the area between um, Siberia um, and modern day Alaska, what we can see is you could actually walk across from Siberia into Alaska because sea levels were so much lower at that time. And actually that's how Homo sapiens, our species, that's how they got into and populated the Americas. About 20,000 years ago, they walked from Siberia into the Americas and then walked down all, all the way to the Americas. And, because, and they could only do that because sea levels were so much lower. If, if sea levels hadn't been that low, they, if they wanted to get to the Americas, they would have had to have made a boat. So sea levels are changing now, as I'm sure you know, and this is because we are causing global warming, which is, um, and we'll talk about exactly how sea level rises in a minute, uh, but because of our global warming, that is leading to this increase in sea levels. Um, so this website from NASA is worth checking out. So it's showing that at the moment, we're getting 3.3 millimetres per year of sea level rise. So when we're talking about this sea level rise, we talk, um, what I'm talking about here is global sea level rise, global change in the levels of the oceans. So as I'm sure you know, there's also isostatic um, sea level rise. That's when the land level changes, goes up or down. We're going to ignore that. That's a localised change. So we're going to ignore that. We're just going to think about what we call eustatic sea level rise, global sea level rise. So this, a global sea level rise, a, a eustatic sea level rise is caused by two things. So it's caused firstly by, so if you have global warming, that will ignore any melting of ice sheets going on, which is what you probably think about as causing sea level rise. Ignore that for a minute. Even if you didn't have any melting of ice sheets, you would still have sea level rise because just warming the water that's in the oceans already, if you warm that, if you warm water, it expands. Okay, so even without putting any extra water into the oceans, just having exactly the same volume of water in the oceans, but having global warming will lead to a sea level rise just because when you warm water, it expands. OK, but obviously, as well as that, we are melting um, these ice sheets or these smaller mounting glaciers, and that is putting more water into the oceans. 
So that's causing the sea level rise as well. So if we completely melted Antarctica, all the ice that is on Antarctica, and put that into the oceans, that would lead to a sea level rise of over 60 metres. And if we melted all of the ice that's on Greenland, that would lead to a sea level rise of 7 metres. So yeah, there's some there's a, a nice web link there to a nice um, summary of the changes in Greenland. Um, and it looks like there's quite a lot of melting of the Greenland ice sheet. And a lot of that water is melting and going into the oceans. Antarctica, um, if Antarctica, as we said, fully melted, it contributes 60 metres to sea level rise. So a lot more than Greenland. But there's... Antarctica is right over the South Pole, whereas Greenland isn't quite over the North Pole. So Greenland is more likely to melt more quickly than Antarctica. Um, so it will take at least um, several degrees of temperature rise over centuries um, or probably millennia in order to completely melt Greenland and Antarctica. So it's not going to happen very quickly. So we will get sea level rise because of melting of Greenland and Antarctica this century. But to completely melt Greenland and Antarctica is probably going to take hundreds, if not thousands of years. Now, what's interesting is we, we talk a lot about, and you see in the news a lot about sea ice. So the ice that's floating over the Arctic and how in a few decades time, we might see summers in the Arctic where there's no sea ice at all. Okay, so that's... There are reasons why we're worried about that. Um, for instance, it, 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 habitats of polar bears will be decreasing. But in terms of sea level rise, sea ice is not a major contributor to sea level rise. So if you think with sea ice, icebergs, a lot of the um, ice is below the surface of the ocean already. Only a small percentage of an iceberg is above surface of the water so because most of an iceberg is below the surface most of sea ice is below the surface of the water of the ocean it's already displaced water around it so if you melt it it's not going to cause much sea level rise okay because most of the iceberg is below the surface of the ocean so it's already displaced the water so we, we lost a lot of floating ice um, over the last few years uh, but this you can see over this 10 year period here that melting of floating ice of sea ice that only contributed about 49 micrometers per year so a micrometer is a thousandth of a millimeter so it's causing sea is contributing to sea level rise but we're not as worried about this as we are about melting ice that is on the land because if you melt ice that's on the land that goes into the oceans that is introducing a lot of new water into the oceans. So in terms of predicting the future, it's very difficult to predict um, how what the rate of sea level rise will be when we will get um, the melting of these ice sheets and how much how much melting there will be. Um, so one reason for this is there is a lag between us releasing CO2 into the atmosphere and that CO2 causing a temperature change, and then that temperature change causing a sea level rise. So yeah, CO2 rise causes temperature rise, and that causes a sea level rise. But yeah, temperature rises are lagging behind CO2 rises. So even if we stopped emitting CO2 overnight, there would still be, probably for decades, continued temperature rises, because when you put CO2 into the atmosphere, it doesn't immediately cause all of the temperature rise that it's going to cause. So imagine if you turn on a radiator, it does not heat a room straight away. So that's like CO2. When you put CO2 in the atmosphere, it doesn't heat the atmosphere. It doesn't cause temperature rise immediately. And then there's also a lag between the temperature rise and the sea level rise. Um, so w when you cause a temperature rise, it doesn't immediately cause all the thermal expansion it's going to cause. It doesn't immediately melt all the ice sheets it's going to melt. So imagine if you bring ice cubes outside on a warm day, 
they don't immediately melt, even though they're exposed to a temperature that will eventually melt them. So there's these leads and lags, which means it's quite difficult to predict exactly how much sea level rise we're going to get and when. That's one of the reasons it's difficult to predict. So one way we can try and predict uh, how sea levels are going to change into um, the future is to look at, right, let's find the last time when we had this much CO2 in the atmosphere. So the, so th this graph here, so we go from the present day back to, and this, this is 3 million years ago here. So the last time there was 400 parts per million in the atmosphere, which we, we're over that now, but close to about 400 parts per million in the atmosphere. The last time there was 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere was around 3 million years ago. Okay, so at that time, temperatures were about two to three degrees warmer than they were before the Industrial Revolution. So, so far, we've had one degree of temperature rise since the Industrial Revolution. Okay, because remember, there's this lag. So we've got 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. It's caused, we've had one degree of warming so far, but there will be more to come. So judging by the last time there was 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere, eventually we'll probably get two to three degrees of warming compared to before the Industrial Revolution. Okay, and that two to three degrees of temperature change three million years ago, we're not exactly sure, it's quite hard to reconstruct how temperature changes, um, how sea level changes um, back in the past, but at least we would, rec we would say six meters of sea level change at that time maybe up to 20 meters so that's probably what we're looking at potentially but it's really really hard to predict okay so this is an interesting um, website here so i'd recommend you going and playing around with this because uh, it's really interesting so it basically allow allows you in the top corner here to look at what areas of land might go underwater for different um, amounts of sea level rise. Okay, so we're at zero meters here, so no, so no sea level rise compared to the present day. So if we go and zoom in on Hull, and you can go and zoom in on where you live, have a look what's going on there. So you can see there are some areas of land here which are blue. Okay, so that's, that doesn't mean they're but they're under the wall under the sea now. That just means that uh, they are below sea level. Okay, so have the potential to go underwater. Um, so they're not underwater. Um, we can put sea defences in to help um, and hold back um, the water. We can pump out areas to reclaim it from the land. But it shows what areas potentially might be threatened by sea level rise. So we can look at all these different parameters. Um, so if we have one metre of sea level rise, which is probably what we would expect and by the end of the century, you can see there's more and more areas um, that go blue. Um, so let's go back to zero. And then if we go to one, you can see there's large areas of Holland, um, which go um, below sea level even more than now. Quite large, more bigger areas of East Anglia um, and some areas of um, um, Hull up here. Then if we have two metres, which is we could potentially get two metres by the end of the century. Um, you can see even more areas go underwater. If we have um, seven metres, this is if you melted all of Greenland. You can see there's quite large areas of East Anglia in particular, and also up here, um, that, that would be below sea level and potentially might go underwater. And if we go down to London, you can see there's quite large areas here and it'd be quite hard um, to prevent all of those areas going under the sea. So if we go to um, 60 metres, so this is, we'd probably get more, if you melted all of Antarctica and Greenland, it'd probably be even more than this. But what we can see is there's large, these massive areas here of Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, and a lot of eastern England um, is below sea level and would be underwater at those times. So I'd recommend going and having a play around um, with this website. Um, I think it's really uh, interesting and allows you to um, look at yeah, how, 
how your um, area of the country might be affected by sea level rise. So yeah, I hope that was um, interesting um, and give you a bit of an introduction to sea level rise and the, the sorts of things you might be learning about if you're studying um, with us at the University of Hull.